And joining us now on our Book Talk segment, great to welcome a man who's written an interesting book. We're going to find out about uh, Breaking the Mail Code. That's the title of the book, Unlocking the Power of Friendship. We're joined today by Dr. Robert uh, Garfield. He is a, a psychotherapist, clinical professor at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. He joined us now by telephone. And, Doctor, good to have a chance to talk with you. How are you today? Great. Great to be with you. Yeah, I had a chance to uh, to, to read through the book, and uh, I, I I never heard the term male code before, but it's an interesting topic. What 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 uh, what brought you to write about that? Well, personal and professional reasons. Um, for the last forty years, um, I've been working as a therapist and a teacher with men, you know, in psychotherapy, <clears throat> and um, I found that um, men who came for help around problems, a whole variety of problems, depression, anxiety, seem to have a harder time actually talking and availing themselves to actually getting help than a lot of the women who would come to the therapy too. And I said, hmm. And I noticed that, especially when I had to confront a problem of my own uh, 40 years ago, coming to a new city, going through a divorce, not knowing anybody, and just starting out a career, that some of the barriers that they ran into were very similar were the ones that I found too, mm. that is being able to open up. And I got curious about that. I mean, eventually I pulled it together and uh, got myself back together. But I found that um, some of the resistances that I had to talking, to opening up, um, to admitting that I was over my head were exactly the kind of problems that men who came to therapy had. And so I started thinking about that as I worked more with men and, um, you know, began to really look at what is it in the culture that makes it so hard for men to open up and get help and support when they run into problems. And that was sort of the background. Through the years, um, I've learned a lot about this. And um, 20 years ago, we started actually running groups for men, which we called Friendship Labs. Right. right. Um, which were really, you know, sort of trading on the power of men in relationships with each other, really to help each other in a unique kind of way. You know, to know that, wow, there's somebody else out here who might look like he's actually doing quite well, might be respected in his community, and yet underneath is feeling quite bad about things, things maybe with his children, maybe things with his marriage, these kinds of things, and that men actually were able to actually support each other in more open kinds of ways when they worked in groups. Hey, you bring a, a good point there. You know, the old joke is that you know guys will not ask for directions. Women are more likely to uh, when you're driving around, but 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 it, it goes further than that, right? <laughs> right, exactly. And when men actually do avail themselves to that, there's an incredible relief. You know, it's like, wow, I'm not the only one out here, and there are other guys who, you know, seem like they're doing pretty well, and they are in some ways who are struggling with the same things. We're in the boat together here, and they take a lot of uh, comfort from that, and they provide a huge amount of support for each other, sometimes that they don't get outside of the groups. Male code, is that a, just another term, or is male bonding part of that? I guess, you know, guys tend to bond uh, over sports. You know, that starts when you're a kid in school. Uh, you know, you talk about sports, and then it moves on from there. Is that all kind of the same thing? Well, men have had actually... Um, you know, the male code really is what I call a set of social guidelines that defines how men are supposed to act and mm -hmm. feel. And um, you know, the origins of that are, you know, 200 years old, really, in the culture. And I talk about that in the book. But, the you know, the emphasis is on stoicism, on silence, on showing physical strength, and not really opening up around the areas that we would call emotional intimacy not showing vulnerability, not expressing emotions, not learning to be quiet, having to compete, these kinds of things. And of course, all of these skills are really important, but for men, you know, the emotional intimacy skills have sort of been kept back. Male code has really not invited those skills in. And so men who are, you know, um, wanting to do that, they're wanting to open up, they feel like crying at events, 
they're not sure about the directions, you know, don't feel comfortable. They end up feeling much more ashamed than they really need to when they run into these barriers. And that's all been part of the mail code. So we're saying, you know, in the 21st century, things have changed. Lots have changed. The economics has changed, the roles of men and women, what's expected of us in families these days. And we really need to expand the code that describes what it means to be a successful man. And that's what the book is about. And also, I guess a lot of it comes from how you're brought up in your family, I suppose. Uh, you know, strong mother figure or maybe a you know, weak father figure, that can also add to uh, how, how, that's how, a, how that, that'll that's work out, right? Absolutely. That's a tremendous issue. You know, and as Father's Day is coming up, I think about it, it's always a time of year. And, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of excited because the book is coming out around this time. You know, so what better, you know, a present, actually, you know, for men who are going through this? Because it's the time when we really are looking at ourselves as, you know, we're being honored. And how are we doing as fathers? How do we feel we are doing as men? Um, are we providing, you know, a kind of guidance, a kind of mentorship for our kids, our boys particularly, um, but our girls as well, that we can say, you know, this is what being a good father is. And I know I'm making the contribution. And for a lot of men, um, you know, they it's, it's confusing because even though we know uh, our fathers did love us, a lot of the times we find, oh, gosh, there was a lot missing from that relationship. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of kind of connecting that didn't happen, which was typical of the time. But the times have changed, and now the roles of fathers are changing, and are we kind of up to where we want to be. Are we really able to provide that kind of hands-on support from the beginning with our kids? And this is what, you know, uh, we're being called upon to do at this time. So um, this, this is the thing that, this is a topic that men really think about a lot. Do, do, My father and what kind of a father am I being? Do, do you find uh, in your research and in these, uh, you know, the, the friendship groups, they have friendship labs, uh, that, that's what you called it, uh, uh, are, are more men receptive to it? Younger men more receptive to it? I guess older men, we're, we're harder to uh, <laughs> to change our minds. Uh, I guess younger guys would probably be more uh, apt to try this, right? Well, you know, I write about this in the book. There's an entire chapter devoted to fathers and fatherhood and the, and the, the helpfulness of, of, of male friends with, you know, parenting. Because father issues are changing at all points of the development because and, and not just the younger fathers. The younger fathers, yes, of course, are being asked to, you know, contribute more, um, you know, in terms of hands-on with their kids. But we're also... In, a, in an era right now where divorce um, brings upon new families later in life right. so that guys are oftentimes having second families and they're having to go back and think through how do I want to do it this time and some of these families are step families so they're having they're taking on children who aren't their own biological children which adds so they're really being sort of called back to look at what actually is a good father and a guy who's doing this at age 50 is a different man who's, than who's doing it at age 30. So um, we're really looking at male code in terms of fathering at all levels here. And what, you know, what will, you know, what do we feel and what's being asked of us to bring to that mentoring kind of role, uh, you know, with our sons and our daughters? Okay, it's fascinating. A very big deal. Yeah. The guys in our groups talk about their children a lot. Um, it's it's really astounding about how much time and how much caring that and how much struggling they're doing yeah. with the, with kids. They think about it a lot. Well, it's a fascinating topic, and I've just touched uh, a couple of points on a very uh, good book to read, not just for men, but women, I'm sure, as well. Enjoy it. It's called Breaking the Male Code, Unlocking the Power of Friendship. And uh, uh, Dr. Garfield, do you have a website you want to direct people to? I know the book just came out. Yes, um, it's www dot rob garfield dot com and um, it, you know will direct you to how to get the book but also it has um, more information about what the book is where it comes from and of course about me great doctor appreciate you taking a few minutes uh, good luck with the book and hopefully we can talk to you again thanks for joining us okay thank you so much if you'd like to order the book we're talking about please go to dogmilesmedia.com and enter the author's name in the amazon search box 
Thank you for listening. Please come back soon for more conversations here at DougMilesMedia.com. This has been a presentation of Doug Miles Media, all rights reserved. You can listen to or download previous programs at iTunes, Stitcher.com, or Doug Miles Media.